Uh, our next speaker is Terry Swear, who traveled all the way from Michigan to be with us today. Uh, she's a founding member and former president of Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation, a nonprofit grassroots group located in north central Michigan. She's appeared in acclaimed documentaries such as Flow and Blue Gold, and the group she founded in uh, Michigan has engaged in over eight years of fighting to protect waters of the Great Lake Basin against Nestle's bottling plans. I am so glad to see all of you here today. Let's, it's great. Just keep going together. Let's save the water in Cascade Locks. I live in Macosta, a small town in northern Michigan. It's located in one of the poorest uh, counties. 48.5% of students attending K through 12 receive free or reduced lunches and 29% of the families are below poverty level. I understand the economic and job situation that is also facing the people of Cascade Locks and other small communities, and how Nestle is trying to convince the public that it's moving into the area will change that. Let me tell you, it doesn't happen. As Nestle moved into Michigan to privatize our water for its own profit, it announced that there would be no adverse impact to the natural resources. M Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation believed then, and it has been proven in the courts, that irreparable harm would occur to the waterways due to pumping by Nestle. Nestle came into Michigan two years before residents heard of the plan to withdraw 263 million gallons of spring water per year, divert it, bottle, and sell Nestle's brand, which is Ice Mountain, out of the watershed in Michigan. Nestle spent those two years meeting with Michigan government officials from the governor to the local officials. Upon hearing of Nestle's plan 12 years ago, I helped form the grassroots organization Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation. president for 11 years and now serve on its board. Along with Macosta, Nestle actively pursued other spring water sources and it now trucks municipal spring water in bulk from another small community about 30 miles from its existing plant. Now I would like to ask has your governor turned a blind eye like Michigan's governor did to the private international company, company Nestle, who is here for its own profit and not for the citizens' benefit? Yeah. Hey, show the governor! I want to see a governor that has If we, a blind if we eye do eye not eye let eye. our voices be heard from the local to state level and higher, we could lose our rights to our waters to private companies like Nestle. Through the efforts of MCWC, lawsuits were filed against Nestle to preserve our water rights in the Great Lakes Basin. It is not reasonable for a large foreign corporation to take the water from the land and communities like Cascade Locks and other small towns. Water seems to go to whoever has the most money and there are no incentives for conservation because the more water you take, the more money you make. Right. Nest Nestle was cautioned by the trial judge that it proceeded at its own risk in building its plant. True to form, Nestle pushed ahead in its building of the plant and continue to threaten the possible loss of jobs as a way to strong-arm Michigan's governor and legislators. 
Nestle claimed to be a good neighbor company to our area, yet it continued to pump at high rates during a long period of low persistent participation and lower recharge, even when there were dramatic impacts and damage to lakes, streams, and wetlands. Lives have changed for the people in Macosta and the members of Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation since Nestle came to Michigan. The issues have pitted neighbor against neighbor and friendships have been severed. Nestle has violated our lives directly and indirectly with telephone polling, private investigators, FBI visits to our homes, and a threatened slap suit, which is a strategic lawsuit against public participation against my son. Nestle has affected my family and others emotionally, physically, mentally, and financially. MCWC could not afford expensive lobbyists or PR agents like, like Nestle, but with strength of morals, heart, and loyalty, MCWC has and will continue to make Nestle accountable for the export of Michigan's waters. Yes, yes, yes. Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation spent well over a million and a half dollars on its lawsuit against Nestle. And we have to continue to fundraise to uh, pay our legal and environmental expert bills. I do not want to see this to happen to other pre private citizens. From my own experience, I know that Nestle fights to get what it wants. Nestle continued to fight the David and Goliath battle with Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation for over nine years. However, with our perseverance, we hold, we won the court case against Nestle by reducing Reducing its pumping by nearly half, Nestle also agreed to lower its string pumping earlier during fish spawning and continue low pumping during the summer months to, to take care of the stress to the already stressed streams and lakes. Even though we won, the lakes and streams will never be the same. I would caution the residents of Oregon to ask hard questions of Nestle and its elected or appointed government officials and don't take Nestle's word for anything. Water grabbers like Nestle undermine the interest of our six generation residents who live on the lakes, streams, and the public that fishes, boats, swims, and enjoys our lakes and streams. The farmers who rely on our groundwater and industry, our economy, and the tourist industry that are so dependent on our water. Water is our heritage and our culture. It must be protected for future generations, not only in Michigan or here, but around the world. said it better than I ever could. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. You are, you are there to do it. Thank you very much. Share.